Welcome to the Waitaki Rangers Heritage Area five-year monitoring report. And we've got Erin and Raywin. If you could come up to the table and just click your mics on and off when you need to, and maybe introduce yourselves and your roles. Thank you. You just might uh, need to bring those mics a little closer to you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good morning, uh, councillors, IMSB members. Uh, by way of introduction, if you haven't met me, um, Aaron Shields, team leader Northwest, and I have been working in the, the Waitaki Ranges area for the last... Oh, when sorry, us, sorry I, I find it very hard to hear on these side conversations, so I think it's quite rude to the presenters. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, yes, yeah, so I've been um, working in this oh, space. Councillor Lee, Councillor Lee, Councillor Lee. Councillor Ferry just asked if we could stop the side chat and then it continued. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, um, officers. Thank you. Um, and it's my pleasure today to introduce Raywin Curran, who is currently the Senior Local Board Advisor at the Waitakere Rangers Local Board. And Raywin has um, been seconded to our team for the, this financial year to be the lead author of this report and has been supported by other staff. And I'll hand over to her and she has a short presentation. Thank you. Right, okay. Uh, kia ora everyone. Um, yeah, so it, it sounds like that you've had a, um, you've had a bit of a talk with, um, with, uh, with Greg about this. Um, We'll just run through a, a short overview of relationships in the heritage area, um, some, you know, the, the purpose of the report, why, why it's come to place, and, um, and run through the summary conclusions. Um, so apologies if we're repeating anything. Um, if we could, uh, do I manage this? Or, uh, Other way. Okay. And it's technical incompetencies coming to play. The um to you? Okay. And da -da. Okay, so um it, the action sought um, you know, were approval of the, the monitoring report and um to delegate ability for minor errors and um you've just been through that. Um the report purpose um is statutory. Uh, the Heritage Area Act 2008, the Waitakere Rangers Heritage Area Act, um, requires um, us to report on five yearly intervals on particularly the state of the environment, Council's progress towards achieving the objectives of the Act and the funding impacts from activities undertaken. And strategically, um, it helps um, to assess the ongoing impact of the activities in the heritage area um, and as, uh, as you mentioned before, can, can be used to inform your 10-year um, your plans and budget conversations. So this is the third year report, uh, two earlier reports, 2018 and 2020, uh, and 2013. Um, for this one, um, it, it's dated at the moment 2023. It's good to just be aware that the content of the report is aligned to the Council's financial year, so it actually covers the period uh, 2017 to 2022, and I think that we will change the title, that in the title of the report to make it clearer, um, particularly given the uh, the um, events early in 2023. So the Act sets the boundaries of the heritage area. It says that it's nationally, regionally, and locally significant, and it seeks to protect promote, protect and enhance the heritage features and it sets out a number of objectives for how that might happen um, and how to avoid adverse effects on various aspects of it and also um, in relation to how people live in it. And an approach is set out for the way that can happen as well as the relationship with it to the, um, the Resource Management Act, which is, um, you know, uh, which is, uh, in most um, circumstances, the the um, the primary 
um, has precedence over, over the, the Heritage Area Act. So this is just a, a quick overview of where it is, if you don't know. Um, two coastlines, a city border. Um, I like this map because it shows the fairly mountainous and extreme nature of the, the landscape um, in comparison to, to perhaps the, the slightly more settled um, uh, nature of the of inner Auckland. So 27,700 um, hectares approximately and got an 18,000 hectare regional park, 6,800 hectares of designated water supply catchments and that includes the five dams in the area which uh, supply approximately 19% uh, of, the, of the city's water. Um, some of those dams are pretty old. Um, I think, uh, believe that one of them has just had a 100 year uh, anniversary. And there are some um, ongoing, uh, Watercare has some plans in place for, um, for replacing some of the, uh, the water treatment plants um, over the next few years. So there's about 21,000 residents and over 17,000 live in the eastern foothills. And we've said eastern foothills, but it, it's really the area which is kind of stretching up towards Titarangi in the right um, and, and works all the way along that, that urban border um, before, it, before it hits uh, Rodney. Okay. So the governance and management arrangements, uh, uh, Member Priestland has just talked about um, the local board's role. Uh, one thing about the heritage area, the act was created, the act was put in place in 2008. The council was created in 2009 and there isn't a, um, an explicit alignment um, between the heritage area and any particular function of council. So um, we have, um, uh, just acknowledging uh, Edward, um, we have um, Te Kaurau Maki and Ngāti Whātua and Mana Whenua in the area. Uh, I haven't put their scope of interest on this map because it is, extends much longer, um, much further out. Um, one thing about um, that I would like to say is the, the Act sets in place, um, it enables a, um, a deed of acknowledgement um, to be agreed between uh, Te Kaurau Maki and Council as, and also Ngāti Whātua. It doesn't specify which part of Ngāti Whātua, uh, it just talks um, broadly there. Um, and as yet, uh, those, um, those haven't been put in place. So governance responsibility, the governing body, three local boards, and the most of the, the areas in the Waitakere um, boundary. And of course, um, in line with council functions, most operational functions and decision makings are delegated to council employees. Um, Auckland Transport maintains the road, DOC manages several small areas of parkland, and those are the pieces that you can see uh, mostly in um, in those sort of dark green areas. So although DOC is the um, is probably the primary department that's linked to the Act, it, its its operational functions are actually quite limited. Um, uh, and then of course, you know, um, the residents and visitors have a stewardship role under the Act as well. So. Uh, the report um, to 2017 to 2023 uh, to 22 is, is quite an extraordinary period of time. Uh, so this is uh, obviously before 2023. 2018-21 flash flooding um, uh, events um, severely affected, uh, particularly Piha, but also the foothills area, and um, there were some damages to home and properties there, and sadly some loss of life as well. Uh, the road network is subject to um, uh, uh, quite a lot of slips, and those have been made very visible in those events, um, but are probably uh, a long, you know, probably have a long-term um, uh, nature as well. In 2018, uh, the forested areas and the tracks were closed to control the Kauri dieback threat, and then within the same period, the track reopening program was. Um, was carried out, and up until um, you know December 2020, 2022, that was working reasonably well. 
The drought in 2019-2020 um, brought dam levels to historic lows. And of course, we have the pandemic restrictions um, on the resident population and council staff working in the heritage area. Um, at the same time, visitor counts increased, and this number is taken from the Regional Parks Management Plan. And um, it's, it's, uh, since 2011, um, there's been an increase from 491,000 in the regional park alone um, to uh, approximately 1.2 million. Uh, per year, and um, I understand that the COVID restrictions and things played a, a part in that afterwards. So that sounds like a lot of doom and gloom. However, um, it, it's um, some of the um, findings of the the report are actually quite quite reasonable in in, in that context. So this is just to give you a, a, an idea of the scope of um, uh, in the impact of something like that. So we have the dam in 2019 during the drought and um, uh, in October 2021, which is actually a month after the flood events. Um, so it had calmed down quite a bit then. Um, I won't run you word for word through the summary conclusions, but essentially just in, in monitoring what we've um, what we've done is, is pin this down to five key areas, uh, the first being around the funding implications, um, the second uh, looking at um, the community and built cultural heritage impact, um, the third is um, uh, effects of change on the landscape and land use, then the heritage area is a public and private place where a lot of the things that I've just mentioned actually play out in terms of decision making and um, cause and effect. And finally, the state of the environment, which sits, sits at the end of the report. So um, the funding uh, is an area of interest um, to the local board um, and to many of its communities. Um, it's not funded for separately and um, because, because of the structure and it follows the structure of council is really all that there's, got, there's to be said there. So there's an enormous variety of management activities taking place, quite a lot of monitoring. Um, it doesn't, you, it's very difficult to go in and, and say, you know, we spent $10 here or we spent $20. It's, it's, it's um, because of the way that things are um, uh, accounted for within the, um, the department budgets. But things do get to where they need to get to. Uh, community stewardship is, is very visible and uh, as uh, Member Presland said earlier, there's, you know, there's quite a lot of um, that apparent, particularly around the environment. Uh, and the, all of these sectors are, are very strong. There's, there's um, an enormous list of groups uh, who take an active part here and uh, just as interesting background more than anything for the heritage area, a lot of the emergency services and things are actually carried out by residents and volunteers. So we have the, you know, the fire services are uh, all manned by locals uh, by and large and the surf clubs which carry out the, um, the monitoring of the beaches and um, are dealing with a lot of the impacts for visitors are also locally run. Um, the next slide, um, again, minor change in the condition of the landforms and landscapes and many examples of positive ones. Uh, and we've mentioned, um, you know, the slips observed. Um, and uh, one of the interesting points in the report is just noticing that Remu did a, a flyover not a flyover, did a survey of slips in the Waitakere Ranges in general um, in 2022, and they observed about 150 more slips than there had been in 2017. So that includes the roads, but also the um, uh, more remote places. Um, again, um, the impact of activities on the regional park is, is pretty well understood, and I'd expect that that people here would, would have a good overview of that. There's been um, the closures, the Rahui, um, 
and that combination of um, all those other visitor pressures and COVID um, have, have increased pressure, but um, things have been progressing well. And finally, the state of the environment. The monitoring program is, um, pretty, is actually become pretty comprehensive over time, and they're seeing some very good outcomes there. Um, I would like to point to um, something that, which is, you know, that, um, that although the outcomes are great, it doesn't mean that everything is, is in perfect condition, and that quite a lot of these um, environments remain quite vulnerable. Um, and... Uh, I'll leave you with this, which just is a, a very quick kind of um, prompt to the, to the varied nature of the region and perhaps to the contrast with urban Auckland. Um, and I'll just point out one or two slides, which uh, perhaps on the bottom left you can see the view of housing looking from the foothills towards urban Auckland. So there's quite a, a shift there between um, the, the heritage area foothills and looking out onto uh, urban Glen Eden and Henderson. And um, the nature of perhaps the road network, uh, you can see there a, a pretty good example of a, a site which um, indicates what, what has to be dealt with um, in terms of renewals and um, repairs. Um, I think I'll leave that with you and... Um, and finish there. Kia ora. Thank you so much, um, Raymond and Erin. Huge amount of work, um, significant amount of work, uh, obviously for a five-year um, monitoring report as well, but really, really appreciate all the work that's been done here and the fact that we have it um, on paper for us to, to make sure we're doing the right thing for the Waitakere Rangers, um, but also knowing and being able to celebrate the progress along the way. Um, we have uh, four uh, questioners so far. So, Member Herere online. Kia ora, Chief. Uh, thank you. Um, just a quick question um, on uh, why are we so slow uh, to get the deeds of acknowledgement up and running between Ngāti Whātua and Te Kauero Wamaki? Uh, through the chair, um, thanks for that question, uh, Councillor IMSB member. Um, the report is prepared by the Plans and Places Department, and so we are not part of the governance team that are working on the development and agreement of the deeds of acknowledgement. This issue came up um, as part of the 2018 report as well. The, the legislation never set a time frame for the completion or agreement of deeds. And so there has been some limited progress made um, as to why um, I'm not at, able to answer that question, really. So, you want uh, the IMSB to um, say yes to the recommendation, but you come to the meeting and you don't even know where, where we are with uh, deeds of acknowledgement. I find it um, I, I find it unusual. Uh, yeah, so the the monitoring report is a wide-ranging report and the deeds of acknowledgement are one aspect of this. Um, what we have consistently tried to do is present the, the warts and all situation as it is in terms of the Waitakere Ranges and we've been free and frank with the local board about where the, the council is delivering and where it may not be achieving as well as it could be. So. Uh, we've presented the fact that there is only very limited progress on the deeds of acknowledgement. Uh, we think that is an appropriate and honest thing to say. Um, in the report, when you say, uh, uh, when, you, when you mention uh, that there's been little or no progress on the deeds of acknowledgement, um, is there a 
uh, a reasoning behind why we are where we are or where we're not. You know, is, it, is there a full, a fuller explanation of the reasons why? I mean, there are there are some of us who think we know why. Okay. Um, through the chair, I might hand over to Warren McLennan, who's joined me at the table to assist with this question. Morning, Warren. Good morning, um, Member Hinari. Um, thanks for the question. Um, we have been working with the. Um, governance section of council to um, get some work going on this. Unfortunately, John Hutton is not um, with the council anymore full time, but um, um, I, and, and so we had, we had got a very small part of the way there, but I think that um, what we can take out of this five year monitoring report is that the council needs to look at how it can progress this um, this deed in a more um, expedient way. I concur with your comments. Thank you. Thank you, Warren. Good to thank you, and good question, Member Henaday. And I'm happy to um, look offline too about if there is anything we can do as a committee to expedite or speed up or work with um, to make sure that process is happening quicker. Um, Member Ashby. Kia ora. Thank you, um, thank you both um, for the presentation and I know the hard work behind the scenes. I know there's a lot of, a large volume of rather disparate data you've had to um, pull together into the um, monitoring report. So we yeah, first wanted to, um, yeah, thank you for, for, for that, those long hours of work. Um, <clears throat> I guess there's two um, lines of questioning I have, um, and I'll start with the, um, uh, I, I guess, highest level objectives of the Act, which was setting up a nationally significant area, um, and you had a, um, a, uh, a bullet point up there around the governance of it being some council and, uh, and um, local board, and you don't know where the budget there's no, there's no sort of one budget for it. It's just a whole bunch of, I don't know, smoke and mirrors. It works itself out somehow, apparently. But um, all of that seems to me pretty lacklustre for what's essentially a nationally significant area um, where we're supposed to not be just holding the line, but actually enhancing all of those heritage objectives, the natural environment, the community ones, the iwi ones, all of these different uh, things and I know as officers you, you don't have a magic wand you can't um, you, you, you can't uh, sort of make that happen but it, it just seems kind of um, to be honest that, that you know these reports come up every five years and it's it, it seems notwithstanding your, your very good work but in an organizational way like an afterthought like oh yeah there's that there's that act in the background it's uh, sort of nationally significant to turn this into a question um, where is where is the thinking? Where is the work in in a joined up way um, on council to actually give full effect to the national significance and the enhancement objectives of this statutory area? Because I don't think it's there right now. Through the chair, if I could perhaps begin the answer, uh, the Waitaki Rangers Local Board does a lot of work to join up its decision making and its. Um, allocation of its budgets with all of the departments and the CCOs and so there's a great deal of work that goes into each and every annual plan for the local board so through that mechanism the local board gets to see and have oversight of the regionally based budgets and so budgets such as the regional parks where our regional colleagues are devising which how much budget goes to each of the regional parks and so the local board gets to see that sort of information and can argue the case of the Waitakere Rangers regional park and its share of those annual budgets so it is a, it is perhaps more of an a what local board up rather than a 
um, governing body down approach to the budgeting. Um, does that partially answer your question? Uh, it's, an, it's an answer, and I, I understand it's, it's the only one you can really give because there's not an alternative, but it's, it's not the answer I'm looking for, but, that, but that's okay. Um, the second, I guess, line of questioning I have was in the, in the Māori space, and you'll already know where I'm coming from with this, so obviously, um, uh, remember, Henade, my, my colleagues talked about the deed and progress on that, so we're in year 15 post legislation, so by the time the next five year monitoring report comes around, that's a whole generation of a little kawero or a little Ngāti Whātua kid that was born and has grown up and is going to uni and still no deed. So that to me is pretty appalling. Um, treaty settlements have been done in faster time than that. So what, I, I can't, um, th there's a big issue there. Um, the, the other element is uh, um, some of the feedback from kawero has been, in addition to the, the um, in the previous um, monitoring reports, in addition to the deed was around um, collaborating uh, on cultural indicators or KPIs, developing that up so that the reporting framework um, encompassed Te Ao Māori, which a lot of other policies and statutes are directing councils to do. Um, and that would lead into a um, Te Ao Māori framework of reporting or, or the two, the two worldviews sitting alongside each other. So again, not, not undermining any of the hard work that's gone in the background, but just in terms of that Māori lens, um, and I, I know because I was the one that did it, um, Kaurau have submitted uh, on these elements for pretty much every annual plan and LTP submission for as long, uh, for probably 10 years, um, and none of those things have been um, progressed. So there's a, there's a, 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 a national um, significance element that I don't think is being met and maybe that's a part of the council conversation with central government, but there's also that um, Ngāti Whātua and Kaurau piece of how you make the reporting reflect partnership a little more strongly, and one of those is through the deed, but it's also through how it's actually framed. So, um, again, this is probably not a question in there, my apologies, but uh, other than how do we do that, um, because it's too, it's too late clearly for this one, but we don't want to be sitting here in five years having the same conversation. So how do we get there? Um, Through the chair. Um, I, I sat here five years ago and we had the same conversation, Edward and I. Um, so um, what you're describing is, is correct and not ideal. Uh, the report is, and we've discussed this with the local board as well, is a synthesis of council reporting across all of its um, departments and so while it is not explicit what you are seeking in terms of cultural indicators there's I know for a fact that there's a great deal of um, engagement and agreement with Takara and Ngāti Whātua over the nature and extent of operational activities in the ranges and so that's that is as good as it gets at the moment in terms of approaching monitoring on a cultural indicators basis. There is some inherent aspects of how the two iwi see the ranges through the work program in the ranges, if that's useful. Thank you. No, um, I uh, again just want to thank you for your work. Um, don't think we're quite there yet. Don't think I'm unfortunately in a place to to to, to support it. But I do want to thank you for for all of your work. Sure. Uh, thank you, uh, Member Ashby. And it's clear uh, to me that we need to do some work as a committee. So I I'm proposing. Uh, I assume Councillor Turner and Member Ashby would like to move the um, monitoring reports resolutions, but if either of you are okay, I'd like to add a, a third resolution in there. Um, so happy to move if you don't want to move. Uh, but uh, request advice for progressing the deeds of acknowledgement to be agreed between Sakawaro Amaki and Ngāti Whātua and the Crown or Council and report back to committee. Would that, would that help Member Ashby? 
as part of as part of it. Chair, Chair, if I may uh, butt in. Yes. Um, I actually think it's inappropriate uh, for uh, my colleague um, uh, Ashby oh, right. to. Uh, uh, it's just just a sort of bit of a conflict. Um, okay. uh, yeah, yeah. I'm 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 uneasy about that. Okay, so I, um, happy to take it offline if, it, if that is a more beneficial way to do it. Right. No. Right. Um, well, good. So, if if would you be okay with that, Councillor Turner? Okay. So, I've got um, three more questions, Councillor Turner's first. I floated that. If that's not going to work, we will do the work offline, regardless. But I, I think it's important there. Um, also, part of the issue is with a monitoring report, it doesn't often tell a full story of what's next or what all the work happening. It's sort of more a snapshot of the data and the evidence, but. I take the point that I'm hearing that we need to be clearer and and progress um, these things. We are looking to have a workshop um, in soon on regional parks in general and thrash out issues right across. So I'm hoping this will be part of that um, as well in the next month or two. Um, so thank you, Councillor Turner. Questions, com um, questions at this point. Thank you very much. So um, the. Heritage area is, in practical terms, very distinct between the regional park and all the public lands which it covers. Uh, do you think the, the Act affords us the ability to um, almost separate our reporting on it between those two areas so we can uh, apply uh, uh, you know, um, a different scale of lens or a different, different lenses to the two separate areas? Through the chair, if I could check, when you say two different areas, do you mean the areas that are designated for the regional park and the separate designation for the water care um, No, facilities? I mean the fact that we have 27,700 hectares um, inside the heritage area boundaries. But, okay. inside, but of that, 18,000 hectares is regional park. Okay. So, so I see a distinct difference between... The, the regional park, which, which started off as the Auckland uh, Memorial Reserve, you know, and, and was, a, was put together over a period of time to celebrate Auckland's 100th celebration, um, and all the areas outside of it. All right. Um, thanks, um, Councillor Turner. I'll just... Um, and uh, just if I'm if I'm not answering your question, just <laughs> let me know. So, um, you know, in terms of um, you know separating out the area, I think I mean functionally that's that's already what happens um, because of the nat because of the um, you know the nature of the governance framework and the fact that um, you have the area uh, overlapped by the local board and also overlapped by the governing body responsibilities um, you know so in, in many respects that that I, I think that's actually what is happening now um, you, you know we have a quite a separate uh, system for looking at the regional park and also looking at the the local board so are you um, you know can I ask what is the are, are you thinking about it in in terms of how you'd fund it? So, so, um, no, I'm thinking of terms of it of impact. So um, we have a, a mixture of features. One of the features uh, is the wilderness experience and the recreational and uh, way we can re relax within the regional parks and the Waitakere Ranges and the heritage area. Um, and then we have. Um, the impacts on the people who live there by some of the actions we have where we've, we've got closed tracks, we've reduced the track um, by area, we're focusing people to um, uh, destination points which is having an impact on, on the local people who, who live in the area. So what, what I'm trying to say is we monitor the features against our objectives but surely we can extrapolate that out to where this report can actually, can actually campaign, advocate 
for um, practical change, you know, uh, over and above just saying giving us, us more money. So you make the comment, um, deaths by a thousand cuts. We're losing our tracks, deaths by a thousand cuts. And that's against the objectives of the Act, which recognises our access to the area. Um, so, it, in responding to that, I just, um, I, I guess, you know, I mentioned earlier in the presentation that um, there are times at which, um, at which achieving one objective will not necessarily achieve um, the other, another objective, and there is um, flexibility within the Act for, for that to happen um, over a limited period of time. So I think, um, you know, while I, um, you know, I understand and, and you know, really agree with, with your, with your um, reflections and, and commentary on it, I, I'm not sure that um, there, in, in terms of the reporting, that, um, that there's anything that that can be said around that other than to reflect it as something that happens. And I think your report has reflected it happens. So I just wanted to see if we can use this report to help. We're talking about the deeds of acknowledgement. We're talking about using this report as a, as a springboard. To, I want to see this, this. There's plenty of springboards. This, this report has put its foot on, its, its feet on that we could that we could activate from this report. And I'd like to see those activations take place. The, last question. Please, I, I note that the, de that the uh, Act says there can be more than one deed of acknowledgement, and in some places we talk about deeds, and other places we talk about it in the singular. I, I'd, I'd like to ask for a workshop on on the um, deeds of acknowledgement, um, because you know we may end up with multiple deeds of acknowledgement in time, and I also see there's a, a, a list of criteria here, so it's quite. Yeah, so, so I'd like to learn a lot about the deeds of acknowledgement as we move forward into this, so that, yeah. yeah. Sorry, uh, uh, Councillor Turner, was that a, a question, or...? Yeah, can you I give us a present... Can you come back with a workshop on that, please? Yeah, can through you? the Chair, um, that might be a matter that our governance um, teams pick up. Um, it's... Um, be in plans and places where we are humble town planners. We're not necessarily the gov governance um, advisors. Yeah. So through the chair, I ask that of you then. Yes. So I I foreshadowed that the amendment, but I think we'll leave it. Or the staff have heard. We're going to make sure that that comes back. I'll just make sure we have a timeline um, on that because it's clear we need to be doing a lot of work. That the difficulty was a with a five year monitoring report, it's largely about reporting that what's happened based on evidence and data rather than pointing to what's going to happen and, and how we can address it. So it's a little bit, you know, it's we, we, we will connect the two. Obviously, this is a great report for staff to be kind of triggered to do do work and, and, and progress work, but we need to bring that. Yeah. So in the next couple of months, we are having a regional parks uh, workshop in focus, but I think part of that needs to be either this or there's a whole separate um, body of work on specifically on that issue. But but I hear you, Councillor and Member Ashby, and the different um, wants and needs from the you're hearing from the community as well. So yeah, yeah, and that's exactly what I'm hearing. So thank you, uh, Councillor Ferry. Um, I think my question would probably be better for a workshop, so I'll leave it there. Thanks. Perfect. Um, and feel free to send them through to us too. So, uh, Councillor Walker. Uh, sure. Um, just ha have uh, a question really following on from the um, comments of Member Ashby, um, which, which I take to be um, an advancement of... Um, you know, the heritage value, so that we're actually restoring and improving things rather than just um, maintaining somewhat of a, of a status quo. Um, I mean, this might well be the subject of a, of a workshop, but um, it, it isn't apparent to me that there's sort of exception reporting around how we're actually enhancing the... Um, the heritage of the um, of the area, certainly as far as the um, 
the vegetation is concerned and elsewhere, uh, rather I I see some um, some negatives. You know, I think 40 hectares loss of um, uh, canopy, the insulation of that um, cell tower at um, Bethel's, and you know the painting of the fire stations white and and so on. I mean, they may appear little, but they all add up. Uh, any any comment there, Aaron? Uh, through the chair, we we did try to uh, provide some case studies and snapshots of individual aspects. Um, so you'll see some of those through the report. Uh, if we could have had more time, we might have found more of those enhancement types activities. Um, so yeah, it's there is more good news and those enhancements that are reported in the document. Yeah. Um, the, the other question I've got is is just around um, the volunteer hours and the like that are um, occurring. I mean, I used to be on Ark in the Park. Are you, are you on that, Councillor Turner? Ark in the Park? I'm not, but I need to ask the chair about that. We were going to appoint well, someone from council. So, uh, I mean, I know that the pest control and the like is hugely dependent on the volunteer hours, and the, and the hours are absolutely colossal. But again, it's not, it, it isn't picked up in here, um, and obviously the goodwill of the people that, um, that live in the area. So I just toss that in. Um, quite obviously, we've got our state of the environment report, which in part covers over these things, but I mean, this is Waitakere specific. So do you think there's a, there's a need to bump up some of that reporting in this? Um, thanks, uh, Councillor Walker. Um, the, the things that you mentioned are, um, are throughout um, the report. So um, perhaps I... Um, uh, okay, so uh, the the volunteer hours and the the commitment are, are, are kind of uh, are mentioned in various places in the report, which is perhaps why you're not seeing them as a specific area. So, um, in relation to the environment, uh, there is actually um, there's a number of maps later on which might be of interest to you, which just sort of really pick out the scope and the scale of that. Um, we had information from um, one of the, uh, from Peace Free Waitakere, which talked about uh, the scale of their vol volunteering activities. Um, and um, I'm just, I apologise, I'm just drawing an immediate blank on the, the exact number of hours, but there were, you know, they have looked at um, over 27 of the groups that they're looking for and, and tried to turn that into uh, an expression of monetary terms. And that was, yeah, and I think um, that's, that's probably uh, a, a focused way of kind of thinking about um, a voluntary activity because uh, clearly in the, um, across many, act uh, about... Clearly, across many of the activities in the report, you know, people are putting in, in a lot of hours. So I'm agreeing with you. Um, I the, the, in page 37, it does say the approximate... I have read that. Record, yeah. Sure. The 57,000 hours in a quantum of one point, almost 1.4 million a year. Yeah. So it's an excellent observation. And, and the issue, perhaps, um, of taking this forward is, is, is really around, um, you know, what happens to those groups in the future. All of the... One of the things about the Heritage Area Act and the report itself is that it's actually very difficult to, um, to pull apart any one particular feature or objective and um, report on it in the whole because everything is so interconnected in terms of the community activation and the, the work that's done. So it's, it's a good observation. The, the other um, question I've got, and, and again it's a while since I've been involved with Ark in the Park, but increasingly you've got large areas that are identified throughout New Zealand for 
pest eradication. There's a na nationwide program around that as it goes to predator-free. And you've got large areas, um, I mean, Zealandia down in Wellington is a wonderful example where you've got a, a sanctuary. And the progress of the sanctuary in one respect is around the release of various uh, birds and wildlife and the like that would have once been in the, um, in the area. So you can actually track how it's going. Do we apply any of these concepts to Waitakere as a whole? Um, that is around the pest eradication overall, so that we've got an overall sanctuary um, objective for the um, area, and, and, and we measure how we're tracking on that. Through the chair, I think our, the closest equivalent to Zealandia in Wellington is the work that is done in the Ark in the Park, where they they have a extensive and ongoing pest control regime in the area that they identify as the Ark. Um, we don't have anything similar to what happens at uh, regional parks like Tafranui, where there are predator fences. Uh, so. I mean, is there a reason why we're not applying that to this area? Because this is a preeminent area, really. I mean, it's got special heritage um, legislation. Uh, yeah, I mean, the council's uh, endeavours in the regional park and the wider heritage area are given strengths through the budgets that are applied in terms of pest control and weed control and. So that happens at both a regional level and also through the local board. So that's sort of the, the nearest it gets, if that's useful. Perhaps that's a subject for the workshop, Mr Chair. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, we have one last question from um, Mayor Brown. Oh, thanks for this report. Um, I just want to ask about on-site septic tank effluent disposal out there seemed to be something which was closely linked to the houses that had substantial slippage during the last um, extreme rainfall events. And I'm wondering whether or not that's in your purview of things you're looking at from an environmental point of view, because um, the people are building on steep sites with a clay layer that's overlaid a rock layer. And if you irrigate on-site effluent into that layer, you are greasing up the slope. And it was no great surprise, and some of the ones I looked at, there was pipes all over the place, and you could cut. And as an engineer, I felt that th this was not contributing well, and I don't think the people there were seeing effluent disposal as being a part of soil stability and its linkage. And I don't know whether or not your group are perceiving or involved or thinking about that but it is part of an environmental package and I just wonder what your thoughts were on that. Um, thanks for the question. Um, so taking account of the fact that the monitoring that we have done is to 2022, like it's five years back, um, I think the issue that you're raising will have been exacerbated um, over the, since February, January, February, um, and it may be worth looking at that in a bit more detail, that, and that, would be, that could be part of the work that Healthy Waters do, because they're the ones who have been administering the, um, the inspections of these um, wastewater on-site um, plants, both here and uh, both in um, Waitakere and in um, Waiheke as well. Um, so I'm happy to talk with them about seeing what we can do for the, through the next monitoring of that. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd like you to do that. There's what they call the USUM um, process is what takes that out of sight, out of mind, and so that it disappears, it's disappeared until something goes wrong. But in fact, it is going wrong all the time, even when they're not looking at it. So thank you for that. Thanks. Um, last question, uh, Councillor Sayers. Yeah, th th thanks, Chair. Uh, I just want to pick up on the last um, question and, and response there, just for clarification. I heard that there's the Waitakere and the islands mentioned there, Warren, but uh, what about Rodney and the septic tank network throughout there? Would that fall into scope, potentially? 
I don't think there has been the same level of scrutiny throughout Rodney. But again, let me have a talk with Healthy Waters. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Right, so I'll get uh, staff to move from the table. Thank you very much for all the work um, once again. Really appreciate that. If you just want to click that mic off there, Warren, thank you. Right, so we, we have left off that um, that resolution. It's on the, um, we, we're aware of it and staff will work on that regardless. Um, Councillor Turner, did you want to move? Oh, I've got you moving with Member Ashby. Are you fine to second? No, you don't want to? Cool, sorry. So you don't want to move the monitoring report? Okay, we'll just bef before you go into yeah, before you go into comment, I'll just move it. So Councillor Walker's happy to move. I'm happy to second, and we'll go into comment now. Um, we have Member Henare first, and then Councillor Turner second. Thank you, Member Henare. Kilda, <coughs> excuse me, uh, Kilda Chair. Look, um, I, I just wanted to make, uh, uh, I suppose, a, a just a very short comment on what uh, Member Ashby uh, said. It's 15 years. In fact, I was in Parliament when this uh, was first mooted and, and, and went through. And we haven't been able to, and I say we as a collective uh, uh, word, um, uh, we haven't been able to get a deed of acknowledgement um, as per the Act. Um, we are about to have to wait five more years for another monitoring report and maybe and I say maybe, uh, there will be a uh, comment on the monitoring reports. I just think that um, in normal life, not one councillor would, would, would accept having to wait 15 years for something to, uh, to be produced. Um, it may not be uh, the, you know, the, the most important thing in our lives, but it is to some people, and what 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 got me what about Member Ashby's comments was that we now have another generation of people who have been born in this uh, this time, and we won't have a deed of acknowledgement for another five years or or however long it's going to take. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually dismayed, and it takes a lot for me to be dismayed. I mean, um, I'm a supporter of the Blues rugby team, and that all that word always comes up. Um, yeah, I, I think I'll leave it there. But you, you know where I'm going, and I, and I'm, I suppose, a, a, absolutely, I'm going to call for a division because I think somewhere along the line, people need to put their hands up and be counted. Kia ora. Kia ora to thank, uh, Court of Member Hannaday, not to, sorry. Um, thank you for that. Councillor Turner. Thank you, Mr Chair. Um, I, I, somewhat supportive of Mr uh, of Member Hannaday's comments, the, this reporting process has to come up with something. We have to have teeth from the process, and it has to springboard us into change, which uh, uh, um, improves what we've been monitoring. And, and I'll just go straight to um, what Mr. Mayor was saying. I sat here listening um, to his, his um, analysis of the situation, thinking that it is actually council bylaw and council controls which are causing this problem. There are a lot of people in the Waitakere's, the vulnerable parts, Kari Kari, Piha, Huia, who are um, more than um, um, happy to try um, traditional or modern traditional technology like composting toilets, like things that actually do not discharge into the environment. But um, town planning rules, etc., 
stop you from doing that, and you're locked into uh, systems which um, pump out, I saw a figure of water care, 253 litres of water per person per day. So um, I, I really want to see what this report falls short on, as uh, Member Henry said, is teeth. Thank you. Kia ora, Councillor. Thank you. Councillor Walker. So um, I just want to follow on from um, Councillor Turner. I agree with his um, all, all his comments. In a, a previous life, I used to sell and uh, design composting toilets and, and the like, um, and I know where you're at. Um, what concerns me, um, Mr Chair, is, is, is really um, we need to be enhancing the circumstance out at the um, Waitakere's far more so than what we're doing. They've been hit phenomenally hard by the uh, by the storms, and the mayor's absolutely right. The circumstances around um, septic tanks and the whole management of um, of water really need um, rapid um, assessment. Um, I guess what uh, what I would suggest is is a need for an overarching um, vision for the Waitakere's and some follow through on that. Um, and I don't. I don't actually see that. It's a pre preeminent area. Um, it, we should have, um, you know, total pest um, eradication enhancement wherever we can. Um, obviously, dealing with the issues around um, um, stormwater and, and the like, and very much an eco village approach in terms of the um, housing, so that everything is as soft on the landscape as possible in every way. And I do not see that. Um, so I don't know how we do that, but it strikes me that there are a number of really good words in the, um, in the Act. Uh, we need to follow through, and, and I guess what concerns me is the notion that we're strung up all the time by um, council budgets and the like. Um, I really don't see that as the constraint. There's an entire community out there that will apply themselves if they're given the leadership. And um, Ken, I think you're up for that. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Baker. Thanks, Mr Chair. Um, so, I mean, for me, we're, we've been asked to, um, to uh, basically accept a retrospective report that, but we've been asked to, but people are asking to have new things added to that report or the way and we look at things. And so, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be supporting this to go through, but maybe we need another, res another resolution in there that says that we request staff to look at what are the things that um, you know, To and, and Ken uh, have, have have requested. It's um, you know, this is a retrospective report that's required, um, and uh, it's we just we just need to move on with that. And then if we need to do some more work for the next one to get the stuff that you're wanting, then let's do that. But it ain't going to be affected by this one. Agree, Councillor Baker. Ed, uh Oh, thinking of how we do it, because this is uh, essentially, and this is always the hard stuff with a uh, monitoring report versus a sort of an action plan. This is really a snapshot in time of a, a lot of important uh, information, and this is going to help uh, with the long-term plan and the funding that goes into this area, and it has in the past. Um, I won't, I'm kind of having my speaking turn now, but I'll try not to. But I think we do need to, if we can put a, It'll have to be a kind of catch-all resolution so it doesn't put Member Ashby in a um, difficult position. I think it just needs to say um, something like report back on report back on options and yeah options and actions uh, to go forward to the ten-year budget. With um, I don't yeah what, uh, I, I have some suggested words. Um, yes. which would be um, uh, acknowledge the need to um, move more quickly on some of the issues raised to line up with the long-term plan uh, and seek further report on how we do that. Does that make what you're looking for? Because...
Okay, sorry. So we'll get something typed up to add. It does need to be kind of broad because there's far more to discuss that we've actually discussed here. So uh, it's coming anyway, but, but I think it's important to acknowledge the discussions we've had here today. So um, we'll have that up. Right, uh, Member Ashby. Thank you. If it's, if it's helpful, I, um, you know, I can abstain from resolutions if, if there's a conflict that arises from any drafting. But um, <clears throat> look, from, from my perspective, this is, I sat through this for 2013, I sat through this for 2018, I'm sitting through this now, I'll probably sit through it in another five years. It, it's nothing, it's not a reflection on the officers, but this just, to me, is just a tick box exercise. Um, this is a nationally significant area. It's supposed to be enhanced. There's no coordination. We've been asking uh, for, um, and this is why we've been trying to get the deed uh, moving, to um, set up a, um, a steering group, a governance group, uh, that could potentially be a, a committee of council under the LGA, whatever the mechanism, that uh, oversees because the Crown has a role in this and they don't put any money in, they're off the hook. They leave the iwi and the council paying, uh, holding the baby, paying all the money. And, uh, uh, you know, my view is that they do have a role in here and they've got away with it for the last 15 years um, and uh, they should be uh, at the table contributing. Um, they have skin in the game, but they've gone like that. So, uh, for, for me... Um, you know, we've been we've been again pushing for the, for this steering group, this governance group, to give strategic oversight of the implementation of the act. You've got water care, AT. You talk to AT, they say, I say, what's your policy on supporting this nationally significant area? They go, we don't have one, we don't care. That's the response. Pretty much, quite, pretty much quoting. So, so that's not good enough to me. So, um, it clearly needs more after 15 years of the same. Uh, it, it, it needs more effort and more political oversight, more governance oversight. I see that being a, a, a partnership of the Crown Council and, and Iwi um, with, uh, with local voice so that the area gets the, um, the mana it deserves. Uh, so I won't be, um, depending on how the resolutions are framed, um, I, I can't, with, with good conscience, and again, not a reflection on the officers, I can't endorse the, a third of the same uh, from my perspective. So, kia ora. Kia ora, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Member Ashby. Uh, Councillor Leone. Oh, kia ora. I just want to um, totoko the corridor that Member Ashby has raised. And, you know, I, I just want to take into account that we have got the Tupuna Maunga Authority that covers all of our other Maunga, um, but we don't have anything that covers West Auckland and the co-governance um, model that we, you know, I, I, I agree with the points that he's making there. If, if there's an opportunity for us to look at a steering group or some kind of co-governance model in the future um, for that area, I think that would that would be very helpful and it's needed. Kia ora. Thank you, Councillor. Um, no, did you have a question, Councillor? Okay. Okay. No, you've had, you've had your comment, um, but I think we get the the point. We've had the C added there. Acknowledge the need to move more quickly on the issues raised in the monitoring report and include this in the long term plan discussions. That was already happening in some respects anyway. But I think for uh, staff that are listening and um, Megan and others will pass it on to those who aren't uh, here today. But I think it's clear the issues are far greater than maybe what is acknowledged through the monitoring report. Um, so we need to we need to have a chance to to discuss that rather urgently and get um, more done in this space. Because I think um, if I'm you know I've seen fantastic work happening in pockets. If you think of Te Kauro um and the Rahui and then the work that's come through a partnership on Cody dieback and reopening of tracks obviously hasn't all happened perfect, but I think it's a really good example of, of something that can happen well and that does roll out well. Obviously, the pest um, eradication and the, the birds coming back and safe swim and things that are all 
piece together improvements that have happened, but if it needs to be far more holistic, and as Member Ashby says, if there are parts of the council organisation that don't that are you know heavily involved in the ranges, such as resurfacing roads or rebuilding roads, every time they we have a storm and they're not acknowledging the act, or there are parts of other departments of council who aren't working with the same as maybe environmental services or whatever that is, then that's not the way we should be doing things. So it clearly needs a more holistic look. And I think what the monitoring report shows us is the success, but also the problems. But we probably need to understand how we move that from monitoring to action. Uh, and we do not want to be here in another five years having the same conversation. So I think this has been a good conversation, but clearly we need to do uh, far better. And as um, Toe messaged me, we don't want him to be a 100 years old before this is sorted out. Um, <laughs> so uh, I will move. So uh, Member Henneday has asked for a division. Um, are you still wanting to call the division, Member Henneday? Yes, please. Yes, please. Cool. So we are voting um, the three resolutions up ahead, um, and Sandra will read them out. Thank you. Thank you, Members. Um, Councillor Hills. Uh, yes. Member Ashby. Uh, against. Councillor Baker. For. Councillor Bartley. Uh, against. Mayor Brown. For. Deputy Chair Dalton. Against. Councillor Darby. For. Councillor Ferry. For. Councillor Filipina. Against. Councillor Fletcher. For. Councillor Foley. <coughs> Against. IMSB Member Henare. Against. Councillor Henderson is not here. Councillor Lee is not here. Councillor Leone. Against. Councillor Newman. What? Councillor Sayers. Councillor Stewart. Councillor Stewart, are you online? Yes, here she is. Councillor Turner. Against. Councillor Walker. Yeah. Councillor Watson. Sorry, I'm on online now. Yes, I'm against. Thank you. Councillor Watson. Councillor Williamson. Right, I don't actually know what happens if we don't accept a monitoring report. Um, it's lost, so we haven't, we haven't adopted it. Yeah, so uh, that's, fi that's fine. I mean, it's obviously going to send a, a message, but the, I guess my concern is that this progresses nothing if we don't do this. So it's a bit of a concern that that's just lost. Um, yeah, I, so that's fine, that's happened, but the message is now that nothing bring, can progress <laughs> because we don't have the information approved going forward. So I will get some advice on what just happened here and cheer. Thank you. Uh, yes, Councillor? Can we hear from the Chief of Strategy? This is a very odd situation. This is weird. I do not understand this, but look, that's, the vote's been taken. Can the Chief of Strategy outline what this rejection of a report that's just been before us, a presentation's been made, what the implications are now, please. Through the Chair, thanks, Councillor Darby. Uh, yes, so it is a, it's a fact-based report, so there's nothing more that we're going to be able to add to this, so uh, the, the report's not going to change. So presumably, when we bring it back, presumably the same decision will be made again. Um, so... Uh, I'd need to check whether we're in breach of the law if we don't adopt a monitoring report. But look, notwithstanding, I guess we will probably bring this back uh, and maybe assist you to uh, to adopt it. 
uh, because it is just fact, that I think the, the, the concerns and questions are particularly around, so what happens? And if there's concerns that we are not, um, we as a council, I mean, are not acting uh, more quickly or strongly in certain areas, uh, then that, as we're uh, suggesting in C, uh, is probably a, a long-term plan uh, discussion. Uh, we will progress uh, the matter of the deed of acknowledgement, as we've said, um, and, and that was requested that we do that offline, so we will do that and we'll progress that nonetheless, regardless of whatever's happened today. So, look, Mr Chair, um, there's nothing, uh, there's no legal issues as such um, in in declining this report, but the report's not going to change, the form of it's not going to change, so we'll just need to work as to whether we'll bring it back at some point uh, or not. Thanks. So now, can I just get clarification on the third motion that's been lost? Um, does that negate that? Does that say that the, co the committee does not want to move quickly? Essentially it does, Councillor. So we will, we'll have to look at that. Yeah, I mean, in general, I've, the, the, ten, the 10 votes against, I had no feedback pre this meeting and I would have liked to have helped or known before this meeting how to help. Um, so, yeah, we are in a, a strange situation, but that's, uh, that's fine. Um, Sorry, through the Chair. Um, look, we are, we are now in breach then of the Act um, because it asks us to both produce a report and for the Council to adopt it. So I think clearly what I will be wanting to do is to bring it back to you. Uh, the circumstances won't change, however, so there will need to be some ability for you to adopt it, notwithstanding the contents. So we'll work on that with, with the Chair. Thanks. Kia ora, thank you. Right, well, we will move uh, to item 9.